and welcome to another episode of the Fantasy Writers Tool Shed. I'm your host, Richie Billing, and today I've got a bunch of very interesting world building tips. I've been creating a lot of content lately on uh, the creation of fantasy worlds. I've also spoken uh, with a lot of different authors uh, about the challenges that they encounter when they are going through the world building process. Uh, I got chatting to one author in particular who asked me what would be the most important bit of advice when it comes to, to world building. So after that conversation, I thought, why not share uh, the, the things that we discussed with everyone else? And what I love about these world building tips is they are just straightforward and obvious ones. A lot of them have been learned the hard way through trial and error. Um, so you can basically save all that time and effort that I've invested uh, and that other people have invested getting things wrong uh, and learning that, uh, that there are better ways, easier ways, more efficient ways to do things. I've also got um, some tips from best-selling authors. Before we dive into those tips, just a, a quick reminder that if you enjoy the show, you don't want to miss an episode, be sure to follow or subscribe. And if you really do like the show, enough to leave us a rating or a review, please consider doing so. It's a great way to support what we do, and it helps other people discover the show as well. Uh, and an even better way to help people discover the show is to share it with them. So if you're in any writing groups or even just to share on social media, that can go a long way in helping us helping us out and ensure that we keep on producing these episodes. If you'd like to learn even more beyond what you hear on this podcast, then check out our Patreon page. You can get access to lots of different fantasy writing classes. You can get access to a copy of my book, A Fantasy Writer's Handbook, and loads of guides and writing tips, a bit like what we're going to discuss today, that are accessible only to people who are part of the, the Patreon group. But if you'd rather not go down that route and would still like to, to join the community, then by all means, please do. Uh, our writing groups meet on Discord and Facebook. We've got hundreds in each, and Discord in particular is is buzzing with activity at the moment. So if you're looking to share a bit of your work, get a bit of feedback, or you just want to surround yourself with like-minded people who are all pushing to achieve the same goals, then it's a, honestly, it's a fantastic place to be, and you're more than welcome to join us. The link for everything I've just mentioned there is in the description. And now it's about time to move on to world building. And here are some tips that I guarantee will make your life easier. I've invested a lot of time lately creating content centered around world building. It may not have something to do with the book I'm working on, which may or may not be coming out at Christmas. But to create that content, I've had to do a lot of research and a lot of poring over old notes and guides that I've already created. I've also been speaking with lots of writers about the challenges that they encounter with the world building process. And someone asked me what my favorite bits of advice on the subject were. So today I thought I'd share with you what I told them. I've got four tips in all, ones that I don't see spoken about that often and ones that I've picked up from some of the best fantasy authors around, uh, one of whom has been on this show. And the first tip I want to start uh, with is one that I, I've learned the hard way, and that is to have a bit of an idea of the story or the type of story you want to tell before building your world. When I began writing stories, I invested an awful lot of time designing the setting for those tales, Probably more time than actually writing them, the story itself, to be honest. <laughs> and what I found, which you may be able to relate to, is that after creating all of these wonderful little details, all I wanted to do was just shove them in my story. It didn't matter if it was put in organically or naturally. I just was too excited. I just wanted to put them in there to show off all these lovely little things that I've created. Now... I think I realized the extent of the problem um, when after spending about two or three years writing my first novel and obviously learning a lot about writing along the way, I went back to the first chapter and it was still in first draft form and it was 12,500 words long, which is an absolutely insane amount for a chapter, let alone an opening chapter when you're trying to draw readers in, that's just going to put people off. 
And to be honest, when I was reading it, I was so bored because it was just one big info dump. And obviously now I've learned that that can be just a natural part of the process, especially first drafts, because I regard first drafts as you just telling yourself the story. So just get it all down. It's just when it's in the editing process that you, you chip away and refine. And sometimes a few info dumps do slip through, but usually feedback from beta readers can detect when the balance is probably a, tipped a bit too far in the wrong way. But what can be difficult as well, as you may know from experience, is that beta readers can be hard to come by. So I've tried to incorporate a bit of a checks and balance system into my own approach to world building, which guards against the copious dump of dull information. And I call my own method natural world building, and it's built upon three key principles to build only what's necessary to tell a story and to reveal relevant details in natural ways. So N R N necessity, relevance, and natural inclusion. Well, it should be N R R N I, but and our ends better. So what this does is by keeping these three principles in mind, it guards against spending lots of time building parts of the world that your reader will never see and you may never ever use at all. Now, I am aware that the more you develop a world, the more you understand it. And yeah, that's something I do as well. But I'm also someone who's very pressed for time and I like to be quite specific with what I do. So if I don't need to use something or build something in the first place, then chances are I'm not going to do that. And what this also does, this approach, is it guards against info dumps because if you bear in mind that you can only include details that are relevant to the story and that you can only introduce them in a natural way, then if it doesn't pass those two filtration levels, then don't put it in. And... Honestly, it's it, it works a treat. But for this particular world building tip that I'm talking about today, I wanted to just to focus on necessity because this is a big challenge, I think, for many writers, myself included, like I mentioned before. And the question that we may, we're mainly faced with is, do you need to build every part of your world before you write the story? Because the amount of people I've spoken to uh, who have said, oh yeah, I'm, I'm writing a novel, but I'm not going to start it until I've finished building the world. And I just think, no, <laughs> just you need to write, start writing the story. You don't want to be trapped in, in a, a cycle of procrastination when you, all you do is build the world. So what I think is probably better is to have an idea of the type of story that you want to tell. So if it's going to be an epic fantasy that's going to span dimensions and planets then you're obviously going to need to do a lot more world building but if you if you know that your story is going to be focused on one city or town then the scope is going to be a lot narrower and you're not going to need to build much beyond that town or city it's like a, a mechanic fixing a car they don't order every possible path before they've looked at what the problem is chances are they only may only need a handful of parts to get the job done and the same applies to world building. I just think if you look at it like that, you're going to save loads of time. And the bits that you are going to focus on, you can develop a lot more because you don't really feel stretched creatively. Now, like with any tip, this is just my own opinion. And you might completely disagree. And that's totally fine because everyone approaches world building differently. And this sort of segues nicely into... The second tip of the day, which comes from Adrian Tchaikovsky, who was on the show a few episodes ago, and he is a person who I admire for his ability to create fantasy worlds that are always so immersive and so unique. And when I asked him about this on the show, he shared a very simple tip that may help you find unique angles, and that is to simply ask, what if... So when you're thinking about ideas for your fantasy world, essentially the task is to come up with a base idea and then to spin it or twist it in some way. And just by asking what if is the means doing that. And it's it's quite a fun 
and spontaneous process because you have no idea where it's going to take you. It's also very versatile because you can apply this to your physical settings. So your, the way your world is, like the, the climates, the oceans, the rivers, the mountains, the wetlands, the ice caps, the volcanoes, anything like that. I mean, what if volcanoes spewed chocolate? Yeah, that's a daft thing, but you know what I mean? If you're writing a fantasy comedy. <laughs> but you, you have even more fun when it comes to the cultural side of things, because as, you, as we, you may already know, when we're building a world, the cultural settings, everything that isn't physical, so everything that's man-made, and the scope is vast, and you can have a... Uh, a lot of fun exploring the different possibilities and also the knock-on effects. And something that I, I really liked that illustrates this knock-on effect is in Rachel M. Shaw's book, Sakaar and Nights. So people, if you are familiar with Rachel, um, she was on the show earlier in the season. Rachel is a fantastic fantasy author um, who's an SBFPO finalist. I think I said that right. So many letters in that bloody abbreviation. But in her latest book, Sakara Nights, Rachel uses the climate caused by a volcano to create a unique fungi-filled land which has shaped the lives of its people in a, a pretty monumental way and it makes the, the, the book so fascinating to read because it's unlike anything that you've read before and it's all achieved through asking what if and twisting the, the way the world is arranged and it all comes from playing with the, the volcano and the climate. So, uh, I mean, there's, there's, there's more examples in fantasy. So in Game of Thrones, for example, we've seen a common ice age with the, the, the Night King and how that has an impact on the people and the climate, in, especially in the north, like in Winterfell. Brandon Sanderson's Mistborn is also another example where the land where the story is set experiences daily ash falls, which fundamentally shapes society in pretty, again, pretty un interesting and unusual ways. And it just goes to show it just by asking what if these are how you get ideas for your story. I mean, I mean, Adrian said when he was writing Children of Time, uh, he was thinking about a spider, uh, a unique type of spider, and just simply asking what if, what if this spider, uh, a species of spider evolved to the same extent that humans did and that spawned uh, children of time. So there you have it. And what I think this is particularly useful for is finding something unique about your world, something that's going to stick out in the, in the minds of readers. And you'll honestly be surprised where it takes you. Just have fun with it. And we go from having fun to being organized, which is tip number three. What, one of the best ways you can do this is by using templates, checklists, and questionnaires. Sounds boring, sounds dull, but honestly, I've learned this the hard way because world building has the potential to be as chaotic as the, the Battle of Helm's Deep. If you're organized, not only are you going to save hours trawling through pages looking for the name of that bloody secondary character you introduced somewhere around chapter five, but it can actually spark ideas and provide inspiration for the rest of your world and your stories. And this is especially the case when you use world building questionnaires because they serve as prompts and they can give you structure and focus for what is one of the biggest and toughest challenges we'll navigate in writing fantasy. Uh, I've got some examples of questions just to give you an idea of, of how they operate and the use that they have. And if you'd like to find any more, I can't recommend more highly the website of the Science Fiction and Fantasy Writers of America, which is www.sfwa.com. And they have probably the most extensive list of world building questions I've come across covers every aspect of your world and i just wanted to give you some examples there's a few questions here on magic systems so is there anything that your magic cannot do is there a limit to magical power how do people try to evade this limit do magic wielders pay a price for their abilities such as being forced to study and devote their lives to it or having to be celibate or do they have to have an early death 
Now, politics? Is there a ruling class? If so, who governs? Is it an, an, an elected government? Um, is it a monarch or is it a tyrant? What unites people politically? Is it a sense of justice or a corrupted belief built on the likes of racism or any kind of policy that's the sole division in society? And are people politically motivated to act, such as protesting or rioting, or is there a lot of apathy or oppression? Likewise, there's questions on food, like what is the staple food in people's diets? Is it potatoes? Is it rice? Is it bread? If they live by rivers or coast, is it fish? Is food easily grown? Like, for example, the Vikings had to, to leave or decided to leave uh, their homeland to find land that's better for farming. So do they have to import food if they can't grow it? Um, what are the knock-on effects if, if food stops coming in? For example, if these two food stops getting important, are, are there any local delicacies or do you, are there any favorite foods? These kind of details um, you can apply to your characters and it helps make the world immersive. So like I said, I highly recommend checking out that list of world building questions, far more comprehensive than what we can include here. And it's written by some of the finest creators of fantasy worlds around. You can also use a world building checklist, which serves as an ideal tool for anyone just looking to, to maintain that structure when it comes to the process of building a fantasy world. And I find checklists particularly useful when it comes to keeping track of the cultural settings, just because there are so many of them. And these setting, these cultural aspects can um, be quite varied too. So for example, we mentioned food, we've got like, like so weapons, we've got clothing, fashion, civil rights. I mean, that's barely scratching the surface. Now I do have a template, a world building template slash checklist, which does have a list of the fundamental uh, world building cultural settings that you can download this template for free and you can use it as a checklist and you won't miss anything that's uh, integral to a world. But from there, you can, add more to the template and you can go off on tangents that are relevant to your story. And I personally think you don't need to define everything in absolute detail. For some cultural settings, you may just have a line or two, but for others like civil rights, for example, if your story is about um, issues like that, has to do with that in, in, in your story, then you're going to write a lot more about it. Uh, and I mentioned that uh, world building template it also helps with the physical side of the, the world as well. So it'll ask you about mountain ranges, are there any landmarks, rivers, are there any towns located close to rivers and cities built on rivers, uh, the banks of rivers. And like I said, being organized, if you've got all of this information in one place, it makes the editing process so, so much easier because you're not having to troll through all your notes, all those pages of uh, of drafts. You can just open your world building documents, look for what you need, and um, yeah, it's going to save you a lot of time, a lot of headaches. And also, something that I always do is using the same name twice for things without realizing, so that can get quite confusing. <laughs> and lastly... A tip that I really quite like. It's very simple, but the it has the ability to take your worlds to whole new levels, uh, and that is to join and get involved in communities, particularly our world building and other communities like the Writer's Toolshed. I find these groups, these online places, one of the best ways to get ideas, to discuss my own ideas, to learn new things, and to find inspiration. I mean, the, our world building community, for example, it, which is a, a dedicated space on Reddit, and it's the one of the biggest and best communities for world builders. It's got close to a million members. So if you like writing fantasy, RPG, tabletop games, if you like, like sci-fi, any kind of story that involves a bit of world building, a bit of uh, creation of something that's a little bit different, a diff uh, creation of a setting that's a little bit different. It's ideal, but not only for writers, it's also for artists, for game masters, musicians, programmers, scientists, even philosophers. And I'd even throw psychologists and sociologists in there because all of them considerations are vital. 
when it comes to building worlds. Now this world building Reddit group is all about sharing your worldly creations and, and learning from the feedback that you get from people um, and also learning from other people who make posts and discussing ideas and tips on everything from making fantasy maps to what weapons people used in the medieval period. All you need is a Reddit account and when posting and commenting, I mean, you just got to you stick to the rules, all of which are pretty straightforward. Don't don't be a dickhead, essentially. But one of the best things, particularly about Reddit, is when you've got that many people in a group, you've got people from all different specialities. You can have experts in a range of fields like seismology, physics, biology, psychology, sociology, which you mentioned before. And I mean, this is how I've met a lot of uh, really clued up people. Uh, I've had questions which have been burning a hole in my head answered by these experts in their field. And what they can do is break down complex information into understandable chunks. They can point you in the right direction of other resources that you can you can explore to learn even more about it. One of the best things about these communities um, and the our well building one in particular is that people share a lot of resources and the Reddit well building community has its own dedicated collection. So if you particularly if you're starting out, it's similar to the the SFWA questionnaire, uh, only that this is the, these guys are well more detailed and you can find resources on how to make maps, how to create solar systems, um, world building and religion, everything down to plate tectonics. There's a complete guide on getting started with the world build, with the world creation process, which covers everything from finding the first sparks of ideas into, and the, developing them into an actual place, how to name landmarks and places and the influence that could have on your characters. They've also got a mega thread on organizing world building notes, which again, we spoke about organization there before. And one thing I really like is that they offer guides uh, for people who take different approaches to building their world. So for example, you may have um, someone who's very systematic and very comprehensive, which wouldn't be me as a, a, a we learned from the first tip. Um, but it also appeals to people who, who are more on the panther side, who like to discover things as they go along. And these guys give you uh, tips on how to approach it if you like writing in these different types of styles. Guidance can also be found on a variety of different world building apps, websites and programs. And there's a, there's a good few guides on, on creating maps using online tools like Incarnate, which is... Uh, very helpful indeed. So in all, it's a terrific crop of resources for anyone interested in creating worlds. And I also have my own guide on this specific topic, our world building, which you can find in the description. And don't forget, my own writing group is available to anyone who wants to get involved and discuss world building. We've got loads of world building related uh, posts. We've got a dedicated thread all about building worlds. And it's open to everybody and the link to join is in the description and within a few minutes you can be chatting with hundreds of other people about your fantasy worlds so there we have it four tips i've tried to go for ones that i don't well i hope you haven't heard before but ones that have really helped me over the years and i, I really hope they help you too if you'd like to learn more about world building i've got a bunch of guides in the description and no doubt will we return into this monster of a subject in the future. So there we have it. A bunch of world building tips, which have really helped me over the years. I've, I've learned some of them the hard way, as, as you've uh, discussed there. And I hope it helps you out in some way. If you enjoyed today's episode and you don't want to miss the next one, which is due out on the 28th of September, then uh, be sure to follow or subscribe. You'll get a notification that way. And if you really did enjoy today's episode, a quick rating on the Spotify mobile app would be very, very appreciated. And also a share on the likes of social media or with anyone you think may be interested in our little ramblings. If you'd like to take your learning beyond this podcast, check out our Patreon page, constantly uh, updating it with new things. You can get access to writing classes, pretty much a full course on, on how to write fantasy, which covers the fundamentals of writing a novel, 
how to edit that novel, how to create characters and how to build worlds. So if you, you want to learn more, head over to Patreon. You can get access. There's all different tiers. Pick what one suits you best. And um, yeah, you'll also get access to lots of Patreon only uh, guides as well. And don't forget, if you'd just like to get involved with the community, um, you can join us today, completely free, open to everybody. And within a few minutes, you can be sharing your work with like-minded writers and getting feedback and making friends. That's what it's all about. Thank you very much again for listening and keep on scribbling. <laughs>